Ed, yeah. what have we got to say? I have got to say a thank you to Yanel because I came on the performance path last year and met so many lovely people. So you will be hopefully watching five pieces of choreography today. I'm saying hopefully five because if it starts to pour it down with rain, then you could just run back here and you might not see them all. But the plan is you would see five performances. Um, one of them is a world premiere that has never been performed before and that will be at the end of your walk. But I'll tell you about each one then as we go down the path. So I'll just tell you a little bit about the performance path and how it came about. So I moved to Eastbourne in 2020 and then um, at the time we were still between the lockdowns. I really didn't get to see as much of the town and as much of its activities as I could have. In 2021 I found out about Eastbourne Walking Festival and I found that really really interesting as someone who had recently moved to Eastbourne I got to find out quite a lot about the history of the city a couple of new places that I had never seen before or that I had walked past but not really noticed and that got me thinking about um, offering a walking tour of Eastbourne but instead of describing some sites and making it historical I would approach it from my angle, my perspective as a choreographer and as someone who loves to dance outside and make dances that respond to particular sites. It must be only about like 20, I don't know, dance, 19 or 20 degrees, but it's really hot. I think I enjoyed the last two dances for two different reasons. I thought the, the the one in in the Italian gardens was was a really nice from a location point of view. It was you know it was the most and like the, the the building in the background and sort of white bone like tree came up from the middle and the, the spreading out it was it was you know it was a really nice location and I thought that the last dance where we were kind of involved and we were following her down the street and you know winding around the street that was really nice as well because it was it was active and you were part of the dance rather than just experiencing there was this um this small street called naomi close i had walked past it a couple of times on my way to yoga and i thought why not that one it's kind of just off the main road, it's much quieter and it's got a really nice curve to it, which I thought I could use. Now my idea, and I wasn't sure if that was going to work at all, was to start dancing at the top of that road, take the audience with me and basically get them to walk down the road with me so they would be able to watch me dance as they walked rather than being set on a specific spot and watching the whole dance from that one place. I had to also choose a piece of music that would reflect that idea of being on the move. So the song called The Road by Full Marx felt exactly right for that. And Full Marx is an artist who's based here in Eastbourne, so it made a lot of sense to also really anchor that piece um, in the local uh, surroundings. It was quite funny to hear the locals uh, when they came home and saw me in rehearsals, they were asking me like, oh, is that Kung Fu that you're practicing? Or are you just exercising outside? And I had really fun conversations with them, with people who live on that road along the way. One of them, I just want to mention her um, because she was really, really sweet. Uh, she's called Anne, she lives on the road. And um, although she said to me she wouldn't really walk all of the performance path because she doesn't walk that much anymore, she was so keen to actually see me perform and so when I got to the road and at the end of the first performance part, I just rang her doorbell and I said to her, look it's now, you can watch the performance and she just stood there by her window and watched it all. So that made it extra special for me, having that connection with the residents and really making a dance on their doorstep, um, quite literally that they could watch from the comfort of their home, from their living room and enjoy and, and be a part of. Well, it's lovely because it um, has it's taken me around parts of Eastbourne that I've not seen before and get me to take in the environment and obviously Yanel's um, dancing and choreography is beautiful and with the music, yeah, it's a really lovely 
event. I made, in response to the mural painting, um, Dance Diagonal, which is outside Tauna, and has been there since 2019, actually. At first, it was not supposed to be there for that long. It was a commission uh, that was meant to only last a little while, but thankfully, they've kept it uh, on the walls outside Tauna. And I find that piece really inspiring, just the vibrancy of the colors, the energy that it gives you, even if you're just walking past it um, on your way to the sea or elsewhere. So I started to just improvise alongside the wall and just taking those lines, taking those diagonals for inspiration. Uh, I would try and reach with one arm, with one leg, just see what my body would do in response to these lines. And then it turned into a dance film at first, a really short one minute dance film, and finally expanded into the live performance that I share um, on the performance path. But that didn't quite feel like it was enough to me. Um, I was performing on my own and it's such a huge wall and such a large scale a piece of art that I thought it would be really nice to involve other people, other dancers in that piece as well. And so for this year's performance path, I commissioned a composer, Ruby Colley, um, to create an original piece of music inspired by the dance diagonal. And I also offered a series of three dance workshops where uh, 10 women of all ages came along and explored those movements, ideas, and responded to that piece of music as well uh, with me. So over the course of the three workshops, we then put together a three minute dance piece where all 10 of them are moving along the dance diagonal mural. And it was a really fun process to create that with them. Um, I was helped with um, in that process by Kiel Morris as well, who's a local dance teacher. And the two of us had a really fun time just shaping these movements with them and eventually sharing that performance with an audience as well. So just imagine all of us on the pavements, um, even in rehearsals, some people would sort of stop and look at us going, is this a performance? Can we actually walk past you guys? We were like, yeah, yeah, of course you can walk past us. So it was quite an interesting process to actually create the piece out there on site, um, as well as perform it on the pavement. absolute delight. I came out of the art gallery expecting to come home and just have a cup of tea and instead I tagged along with this uh, group of people who were watching da um, dancing outside the art gallery dance diagonal and then this lovely lady Luke said you know why don't you join us we're going to watch a bench and a dance with the bench. That's what, what I did and it was a bench I wanted to see as well. Dolly, I uh, loved Eastbourne. Was. So, and, and the uh, dancing was great. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely original for me. Never seen anything like it. I think it's the funniest one to do and to perform. Um, it started from improvisation, as often is the case uh, with my work. I just start to improvise in places and then film lots of improvisations and then just pick a few things that I enjoy watching, that I enjoy performing and stitch these together to make the choreography. What I enjoy as well is that on the bench, you constantly get people walking past you, you get dogs coming uh, by your feet and you always can get inspired by that as well. You can make eye contact with people because you're quite close to them. So it's quite a, a personal dance in that sense. You're not just looking at a silhouette you know, far from you in the distance, you're really quite close to the performer. So after the bench dance, we go into something quite different. And that dance is called Bone Upon Stone. So it happens in the Italian gardens. And it was basically a music video originally. Uh, ben Henry Edwards had composed the piece. He sent me the lyrics, sent me the song and just asked if I could just give him some movement, uh, give him something that he could add to that music video to 
um, accompany the the piano, the the music itself, and bits of him singing. I find dance a bit hard to understand sometimes, but I think partly because it was explained to us about how the piece works and the kind of the inspiration behind it, but also just because of the movement itself was quite. She's sort of negotiating the space and sort of struggling, and I really like that because it it, it, it was a bit to me it was a bit like. When you see um, dance and it's really polished, quite kind of hard to understand what's happening. But with that, it was like when you could see a, um, like a, an artist's brushstrokes or the way they've drawn, you know? It, it, like, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, but I kind of like this sort of, the structure and the kind of struggle in it, you know? I didn't really know what. Um, I was just playing with ideas. Yeah, putting my bones upon the stones there in the gardens started to improvise and played with the pillars in the gardens, just all of the surfaces that I could use. And then slowly, slowly that turned into a more set piece of choreography. This is it now for the Performance Path 2023. And I just want to say a massive thanks to everyone who came along, everyone to um, who participated in the dance workshops, but also who just was curious and interested enough to come along and, and take part in the walks with me. We've been so lucky with the weather this year. That was unbelievable. Um, I hope that this Yanael effect, as they call it, will continue and that whenever I stage my next outdoor performances, the sun will be with us as well. Um, this would not have been possible without the support of all of my partners, Arts Council England, East Sussex Arts Partnership, and all of the local organizations, Age Concern Eastbourne, Eastbourne Dance Space, uh, Towner and Eastbourne Alive, who've been really, really supportive. And then of course, Printers Playhouse, um, who've helped us give everybody silent disco headphones for the experience. So I really hope that we get to continue working together and bring the performance path back again um, in the future.